Hey everybody, welcome back to Nation. So uh, we just left off. We were resetting up for the end of the era of antiquities. I had just put out the rest of the cards. I have to move up the progress marker. Oh, I forgot by the way, we reset the war because there's not a war going on. And also I reset my special. I forgot that at the end of last turn. And we have to do growth. And so again, we gotta choose who takes what. Now, I only have two bucks. That means I can't buy very much. And here's the interesting thing. Look what came up. One war technology, chariots. I do not want Jen to get that because if I grab this thing, that means I can be I can be the only military power in the world. I can maintain control over that, which means I continue to be first player. Means I can you know do wars and battles and stuff, and she can't. If I if I don't buy that first, and I'm first player, so I can get it. She will definitely get it. So it's but it's expensive. It costs me three, and because of that, that means my income is gonna I'm gonna take money as my growth. Now what is Jen gonna do? And she's got plenty of money. She doesn't have much ore. And I think she's gonna actually take ore this time because she plans on doing some more building stuff like that. She's already got plenty of money to buy stuff. She wants to build more. Okay, so there we go. We've done our growth. Neither of us have gotten, we, heck, we both had a leftover population member last, last round, so we're not gonna buy more of them. Now we find out what the new event is. And the new event is, to, uh, well, let's see. There's gonna be a little bit of famine. There's two architects that show up. There's an Aryan or, or the Aryan migration, which means whoever has the least military loses three culture and the code of, of Hammurabi, where everybody except for whoever's last in military, uh, you know, wait, no, whoever's first in military in a two player game gets three food. Whoever is last in military, or ah, stability, all right. So basically, being in front of stability gets you three food, being in front of military um, ensures you don't lose three culture. Okay, so that's what's on offer here. And right, and then we refill the architects. There's a, always one architect, so there are three architects available. Um, a benefit for being first in military and a benefit for being first in Stability, and that's actually usually the case. There's a small percentage of these event cards that are 100% beneficial. Both things really help you if you're in military. There's a slightly larger percentage of these cards that don't care about military at all. You know, they're, they're both based on food production or who went first or whatever. Um, but the majority of these cards generally benefit you, benefit whoever's in the lead on military and then provide some other benefit. That's what the majority of the cards are. So that's one of the reasons it's good to be ahead in military because the majority of these events, you'll get some benefit. You, I mean, you know, but then the other benefit is up for grabs depending on what it is. That's generally, that's one of the advantages of military, I'm military. The other ones being going first, the other ones being the only people who can, you know, start wars and stuff like that. So, military is great, but um, not being military is not the end of the world because military is also expensive. It sucks up resources to maintain a big military resources that could be spent elsewhere anyway though so that was the setup i am the first player what am i going to do remember because i've got sun Tzu, this is my first action i get to do two things now instead of one and i know what one of them is going to be i am definitely going to spend three bucks and get this chariot and can maintain total domination of ancient military might now that means i got to put this in one of these spaces and i got to get rid permanently of one of my abilities now i could just get upgrade axman in a chariot if i did that though i mean this guy gets fired wherever i put it if i put it here those two guys would get fired so if i don't want to fire my guy remember i did pay an ore for him already i don't want to throw that away what the heck i will replace my quarry so now i've got two different military things i could do now, that was my member, because of Sun Tzu, I get two actions now. Now, I know what I want my other action to be. I would like to get a wonder under construction. And there's the pyramids and there's the oracle. I would like to do that because there's a lot of architects out. But here's the problem. I now only have two bucks. So I wouldn't be able to buy anything else if I buy anything. So I think if I'm going to buy anything, it needs to be a level one. Oh, but... I want to buy a level two so I can start a war because my military is ahead of Jen. So I definitely want to be able to start a war. But I want to have more money to be able to conquer Israel or get a colony in Israel. I need more money. Because that, that chariot costs me way too much money. So as crazy as I think my other move, I'm going to spend one buck and I'm going to hire Sirius or, or, or Cyrus the Great. Because every time I get a colony, he gives me three bucks. And that sucks. I've only got to use Sun Tzu once and then he's gone. 
But I paid a buck and this means if I get two colonies, I'm gonna make six bucks this turn. So I'm gonna have more money to do more stuff. So that was, those were my two actions for my first turn and now it's Jen's turn. Let's see, so what is she gonna do? Well again, she can't do wars. She can't do colonies. There's two, what do you call them? Wonders she could build. Remember, she wants to build a wonder because that's her, that's her strength. She's also three buildings. And now here's the thing. Since I have now pretty much totally locked in military, she can't catch up with me on military. One thing she definitely wants to do is ensure, no matter what, that she comes out ahead in stability. Because you know, if I'm going to hit her with, if she's going to, if I'm going to hit her with a big war that maybe makes her lose six food, she wants to have at least six stability to absorb that. Plus, if she's ahead in stability, she gets excess, she gets extra food at the end of the turn. And yeah, basically, if you can't be first in mil in a two-player game, if you can't be first in military, be first in stability, and it all evens out. Everything's even, Steven. Um, you don't get some of the military benefits, but you don't have to pay the extra income, you know, the extra cost of maintaining a military, and you generally get a lot of benefits for being stable. Hmm. Right, right, right. Okay. So anyway, what's she gonna do? She's got six bucks. Does so she want to go ahead? And she could actually afford to do both of these. But you know what? Actually, because stability is so important to her, she right now she has the ability to. She could put more guys into the ziggurat, but it would be kind of nice to get this confusion academy because you know, like replace this. And then she's got two places where she's generating more. Um, what should we call it? More, uh, more stability. Plus, she goes out here. She'll have more money, so she could stay ahead on the money race. So that's kind of nice. Or does she want to try and make a go for getting two? Yeah, what the heck, she's gonna do that. She's gonna pay three bucks and get this oracle. And the oracle is under construction because when she finishes, and it only takes two guys, let's see, she's gonna need three ore for this. She's got four ore. Ah, but if she does that, she's gonna spend four ore to get two stability. Hold on a second. She could spend two ore to get four stability in, and so I think it's more important that she gets she gets she could get more uh, stability through ore by just pumping up her ziggurat than the oracle. So she's not going to go for the oracle. Plus the oracle is expensive. So let's get that three bucks back. But that she's going to take the pyramids instead. Right. That only cost her two, and it means more money. Although she'll she'll lose more food too. So that's something to bear in mind. There's not going to be much famine this turn, so she's not that worried about it. So she's going to start working on the pyramid. That was her first turn. Back to me, back to my first turn. Now I've got no money, but I'm going to spend my last dollar. Oh, you're right. No, no, I'm not going to spend my last dollar. I'm going to spend an ore and hire my last guy as a chariot. That means I now have one, two, three increase in military. I'm up to five now, which means I have enough military to conquer Macedonia and Israel, or colonize Macedonia and Israel. Plus now, my raid value has gone up for, to three, although there's no battle, so I won't get to raid anything this year. But anyway, so that was my next move. I've increased my military enough to get these guys so that I'll make the money from um, Cyrus. Jen's turn again. Let's see, she could start working on the pyramid, but she's in no rush on that. I see, I think she's gonna buy another building. She's gonna spend one buck, either the granary to get more food, but she already has a brewery that generates, I think this, this academy is really nice. But she doesn't need to, well let's take that money back. Because she can just put more guys into the ziggurat and get, right, if she puts another guy into the ziggurat, huh. then she has no more guys. She could pull somebody off of the temple, but then she's losing her money income. If, oh, that's it, yeah, if she, okay, that's it, okay. so. She is going to spend a dollar and buy the Confucius li the Confucian library, put it over here. And the reason for that is she's going to pull this guy over here. She'll still take as much money, so she still uh, keeps her money income. But uh, between that and this guy, she will increase her stability quite a bit. And hopefully she'll come out on top. But anyway, so that was her next move. She got the Confucian Academy. Back to me. Now that I've got five military, my next move is I'm going to spend my last dollar and colonize Macedonia, because I had five military, I needed four. My military is increased by two more, and more importantly, I get three bucks, thanks to Cyrus the Great. Okay, Jen's turn. All right, she, uh, well, she can still buy something. Is there anything else she wants to buy? Hmm, no, I think she's, well, this is her last low-level thing with a 1-1. One, one. She could say buy the granary and it becomes a 2-1, or the lighthouse becomes a 2-1, or does she want to save her money? 
she still has enough money, she could get the oracle. Let's say she's gonna try and finish building this pyramid and then go for the oracle. So she's gonna start recruiting higher, hiring architects. So she'll hire one, and that takes two ore. Right, okay, so that's that. So she started building the pyramids. My turn again. Now, I'm gonna spend my three bucks to take over Israel, or again, colonize Israel, because I have a military of seven. So that increases my culture income by two, and I get three more bucks. So I spent three, right, so I've still got more money, I can still buy more stuff. All right. Although again, should I have done that? No, I needed to do that. If I didn't do that, if I spent my money on something else, then I wouldn't be able to do it. So I had to do that to keep my money coming in. Okay, so that was Israel. Jen's turn again. She's gonna architect again. This one costs her one ore, and she's uh, done with that. Okay, back to me. Right, so I've, I've got three colonies now. I mean, ultimately I'm gonna replace these with better colonies, ones that actually generate victory points, but those are quite nice for now. Um, I've got three bucks so I can still buy stuff. I think maybe, yeah, I am gonna buy the Oracle. And so now I have a wonder I can start working on as well. However, unfortunately for me, it's Jen's turn. She is now gonna grab the last architect. Boom. It costs her no ore to place that architect, and she has now finished her second pyramid, which is three more points, but it's just gonna cost her more food, but she's gonna make more money. And now I'm kind of bummed because there are no architects, so I've got this oracle, but I won't be able to start working on it till the next round when more architects come out. But anyway, so it's my turn again. So I've still got ore. I've still got food. I can't buy anything more, so now do I want to use my ore to rearrange these guys and put stuff, because I want to think about how much I'm going to generate. Now Jen's still got one more guy. Now I don't need all this military. So I could, because this guy's gonna cost me a dollar, so I could fire him. I, I, I hired him basically so that I could, you know, had enough military to get these guys. But now my military's increased because of Macedonia, so I could, let's say I'm gonna fire him. Now that doesn't take an action. So my military goes down, one, two, three. So, heck. Maybe I'll even fire this other guy, because my military will still stay at two. Oh no, I'm out of money, so that means I can't fire a war. I want a war so that I can make Jen lose. Oh no, shoot, but I have no more money. And there's no way I can get money now. Yep. So, no, there will be no war today. The Punic War and the uh, Hyksos invasion never happened because I was too busy colonizing. Okay, but anyway, so Jen, is, or no, me, my, me, what am I gonna do? I've fired this guy, what do I wanna do? Do I want to increase my culture? Do I want to, you know what I think I do? I want to stay ahead on culture because I'm hoping to get that food bonus too before Jen gets it. So I'm gonna hire this guy. Um, and that cost me another ore. And my culture, one, two, has gone up by two more. So now it's gonna be tough for Jen to catch me on culture. So I'm, I'm in position to win both these events on military and on culture. That was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn. She's got another guy, right? So she's gonna stick with the plan. She's gonna hire him. And that increases her culture by one, two. And now that's the thing. She would have tied. If we would have tied, then, well, basically neither of us would have gotten the uh, benefit. But since I've gone on ahead and increased, and she's got no more ore, so she can't hire anybody, there's no way she can get more culture. She's done. My turn. Let's see, I have, uh, I don't have any more money. I can't buy anything. I have ore. I can move guys around some more. And maybe I should. Because right now, I'm gonna generate three ore, one food, and one culture. Or I'm sorry, one money and one culture. I'm gonna need food. I've got the food to pay for this famine that's coming out, oh, but I need two food. I need two food, and I'm not generating any food right now. If I don't fire this guy, I'm gonna have a deficit of food, which means I lose a victory point and I have to pay my culture instead. I don't wanna lose a victory point. Maintain this guy is not worth it. So I'm gonna fire this guy too. So now I only need one food, which is what I'm gonna do for that. So that means I've got a guy I can hire and do something else. So I'll hire him. So all my military's gone. But I'm still in the lead on military, thanks to Macedonia. So I'll still get both of these event bonuses. And what am I gonna do? What am I gonna hire him in? I guess I will try and get some more money and some more culture. All right, so, and that cost me one. And I'm done, and now Jen, she, I believe, passes. She's still got money. She could buy something, but then she'd end up firing somebody. So yeah, she's gonna pass. 
I'm going to pass. We're done. Production time. Let's see. I don't, I'm not going to produce much. Let's see. Well, let's see. Uh, money. I get one, two money. And I don't lose any money because I fired my military. Food. I generate no food at all. Right? Uh, or I generate one, two, three, four, five, six ore. I am the king of ore. All right? Six ore. All right? And culture. I generate one, two, three, four culture. One, two, three, four. So unfortunately, I did not catch up with Jen on culture, so she's going to get the bonus point at the end of the era. All right, so that was culture. Now, for Jen, she generates, let's see, she does a bit more. She's got two pyramids. She generates four bucks. And anything else? Five bucks, six bucks. She generates, she's, she is rich over there in Egypt. Okay, she generates six bucks. Food. She loses four. She generates four over here, loses four there. So that's a wash. So she breaks even on food. Or she generates one. Generates one. One ore. Okay. Um, oh. I just realized, Jen didn't have to pass. She could have traded in one of her food to convert it into money or ore, so she could have done more stuff, but it's fine. She, she's, uh, so anyway, so she generated ore, she only gets one ore, and then how much culture does she get? She gets one, two, three culture. One, two, three, okay. So that's it for generation. Now, player order, I have the most military, I stay first player, war. I didn't start a war, uh, this card should actually be removed altogether. So I didn't start a war, so there's no war to resolve. Events. I ha Jen has the least military, so she loses one, two, three books, but she's still in the lead on culture, unfortunately. I just needed one more, just one more. Uh, let's see, all but the least uh, stability get plus three food. So I get plus three food, which is good. All righty, so I get plus three food. So I got both those benefits. That's it for the events. And now famine, uh, there's one food, so I have to pay one. Jen has to pay one. It's to change. And now we are at the end of an age, so we score. Whoever's got the most culture, that's Jen. She gets one point for everybody she's ahead of. She's only ahead of me, so she gets one point. And that was it, that was the second round. Let's go on to the third one. Let's move on into the medieval era. So, Granaries, Lighthouse, Punic Wars, and the other war, they're all gone. Um, bye bye This aqueduct, even though we're in medieval, there's one last piece of antiquity. Nobody's built aqueducts yet. And now a whole bunch of medieval stuff comes out in the second age, a mint. The uh, Vandalic War, a guild hall, Battle of uh, Ain Yacht, Prussia colony, England is a colony. So you can see all colonies now start generating victory points. The Battle of Manskirt, the Crusading Crusader States, Marco Polo as an advisor. Wow. Wow. Okay, that's really interesting. Again, no military came out. Jen is going to have to continue her peaceful ways, but she's fine with that. Three colonies came out, three battles, one war, three buildings. Okay, so, and we're done with that. Remove, let's see, we're in the second age. So we refill. Now we have to do our growth again without knowing what the event is gonna be yet. What will it be? What could this, oh wait, oh, but it's not gonna be anymore. It's gonna be the second era events now. So we don't know what it is yet. So what am I gonna take? I've got a lot of ore. I'm certainly not taking ore. I don't think I'm taking food. I, I'm money, obviously I'm taking money because I am broke. I am plum broke. And I can't buy anything without some money, which means I'm probably gonna colonize again so I can make some more money. What's Jen gonna do? She's got lots of money. She's got no ore. I'm pretty sure it's a no brainer for her. She's gonna generate some ore. Okay, so that was that. So once again, neither of us increased our population. Um, you know, Even though they're just sitting there waiting, we're just making do with what we've got. But the more population we have, but without that ore you can't, well actually wait a second. How much is there here for Jen to actually buy? She has one ore. She might want, a leader doesn't need ore. Uh, the aqueduct, the mint, or the guild hall. She can't do these battles, she can't do these colonies. Maybe, you know what, what the heck? She is not gonna get ore. She is not gonna try and build a lot of stuff. She's gonna keep her guys here. Instead, she is going to increase her population. And that means she now owes um, three more food. She needs three more food she needs to generate. She just puts him up here in the brewery. That's two of it right there. But what the heck, this is a very dangerous move, but she's gonna make a go for it. All right, so, yikes, scary. So that means with one ore, she'll only be able to, she can get the guild hall, the aqueduct, or the mint. 
Shonen doesn't need the mint. She has enough money. Ah, she might get this guild hall because she can start generating some big ore. That might be a nice one for her to get. But she'd have to get rid of something. We'll worry about that later. Okay, so we have done our growth. Now it's time for the new event. We find out what happens in the beginning of the medieval era. Uh, Benedictine rule and paper money. Okay, there's going to be one famine, three, one, two, three architects come out. Very nice. Whoever has the most stability gets four food. And this one, all players can give up three food and get five dollars. So that's very nice. No military here. So Jen's not going to get hurt by military over there. But I might start a war, so she'd have to worry about it there. Anyway, though. So that's the new event. And now architects, in a two-player two game, one architect comes out, so this time there are four architects available. No, um, and that's nice for me, so I'd definitely be able to get both of them, and there's no wonders, so Jen will not be able to get a new wonder this turn. All right, there we go. I am still, as always, the first player, first dibs for me. I, only, I, I, say I'm, I think I'm going to definitely colonize some more so I can get some more money because I didn't make much money. But do I want to get Marco Polo, which for uh, action, once per round, I can give up two food to, uh, or two ore to get four bucks. I, can, I make money from colonizing. Or Eleanor of Aquitaine production. If you bought a colony, so this is another one. Ah, so this is an upgrade to Cyrus. She makes colonies worth five bucks instead of three. That's interesting. That is maybe worthwhile as I just continue to colonize. But you know what? I don't have much military. These colonies require 10, 11, and or 11, 12, and 13. I have to bump up my colon. I have to bump up my military again. Well, I've kind of painted myself into a corner here. That's really interesting. What am I going to do? I cannot. I cannot benefit from Cyrus. But I go first. I could get Marco Polo. And then if I just give up two food, I could get four bucks. I was going to get six bucks for, you know. Oh, wow. Now, if I, don't, if I don't colonize this, it'll come down here. It'll still be available next round, the Crusader States. So I think, but I, mean, I, need, I need military. Which means I'd, I'd suck up money. So the money I'd get from colonizing would get gobbled up instead by... Chariot. Oh, but remember, there's battles here too. Battles are a quick way to get resources. I think I am. I think I am going to have to get some military back. Probably going to hire a chariot, which means that'll put me up to five, which means I can't colonize any of these things, but I would be able to do these battles, and I'd be able to start a war. Or can you start a war without military units? I, I don't know if I can start a war without an actual military unit. Let's look at that really quick. Uh, war cards... Military, war. Any player can buy a war. No, no, no. Anybody. Jen could buy a war. See, that's really interesting. I totally forgot this. Jen has no military. She could still buy the war. Which means if she did it right off the bat, the war would be at zero and the war wouldn't bother her. That is the equivalent of her paying one dollar. Wow. That's the, she would be pay, if she pays one gold to make a war that she can't lose, that effectively prevents me from buying the war. So it effectively nets Jen one buck. So I think that means I know what I'm going to do. My first move is, before Jen does it, I am actually going to spend one gold and buy this war before Jen does. Because that, if nothing else, pretty much guarantees me one point because Jen can't move her military up. And if Jen doesn't get her stability up, she'll lose some ore. So that was my first move. And because if I hadn't done it, Jen would have done it, and then the war wouldn't have affected her at all. Okay, so now it's Jen's turn. She's got... Uh, doesn't look like she has much ore, but here's the interesting thing. The Petra, whenever she wants, she could trade in one of these food. Uh, remember, give up one food to get three more ore, money, or culture. So I think she's probably going to have to do that. Because she's going to need some... Well, I, but is she... Right, she's not going to buy that much. She does want to buy the guild hall, though. She would have bought the war if she could, but that's gone. So she's going to pay one and buy the guild hall. And what is she going to replace? Let's see, this gives her ore and culture. She's already making a ton of money, so I think she'll dump this temple... And, you know, because she, she breaks even on the culture, but she's replacing getting one buck for three ore. All right. So that was her first move. She bought a guild hall. And now there are three places where she can put people to earn three points at the end of the game if it doesn't get replaced. So basically, she lo effectively, she lost a point because now there's not a guy in the temple anymore. But she can get that point back by putting people in the guild hall. Back to me. Back to my turn. Yeah. All right. So the war is up. All right. So I need some military so I can do these battles so I can get some more resources. But to get, I see, 
All right, so I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I would have to hire three chariots to be able to conquer England, which would give me an income of three plus three from Cyrus. So I'd get six bucks if I put a lot of guys. That's interesting. But see, if I take guys off of here, I'm going to lose my lead on culture. I can only make two chariots because I don't have enough. But you know what? Now that Jen's got more people, I think I'm going to lose culture to her anyway. I don't think I can stay ahead of her on culture. I just don't think I can do it. Because she's got more people than me, so she can pump them more into her ziggurat and her Confucian Academy. So I think I've got to give up. Yeah, I'm probably going to. So I'm going to, on my turn, I'm going to fire somebody and hire a chariot. So that costs one ore. My military goes up by one, two, three, and, um, and I'm going to lose money, but okay. So that was my turn. I hired a chariot. Jen's turn. All right, is there anything else on the board she wants to get? Marco Polo is a nice leader, and it's just kind of a nice thing in general to get lots of money, but Jen's earning money hand over fist because of her two pyramids. And she could spend a lot less and just get this mint. But no, she doesn't need a new building. But she's not, she, the advisor is just doing nothing for her. But, you know, food is, she doesn't want to be giving up food like crazy. So I don't think she's going to get an advisor. She can't colonize. She can't do battles. And she's got three nice buildings. She doesn't want to place buildings. So I think she's done with, the, all right. She, she, oh, but, right. Now I think is the time where she is going to use the Petra's ability once per round to give up one food. And she is going to generate three ore. Not to build more buildings, but to put these guys to work. So now that was a free action, doing this is a free action. So now she's gonna pay an ore and put somebody to work in the guild hall, which means she's gonna start generating a lot more ore. All right, back to me, back to my turn. I'm gonna fire this other guy from the temple and hire him over there, so that costs me another ore. My military goes up one, two, three more. And one, two, once again, and I'll be able to conquer England, or you know, take England and make some money. All right, Jen's turn again. She's going to lose another ore and put this new guy, this is the new guy she hired, who she needs food to take care of. Let's see. So now she needs three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten food at the end of this year. But she's going to get four food for um, winning stability if she gets the stability. She wants to get that stability. So this last guy, to get stability, she can either put it in the Confusion Academy or the Ziggurat. She gives her another ore or another money. She's getting enough money. I'm going to put in the ziggurat. Okay. So that means, boom. She is now tied. We are tied for stability, which means, now first of all, her stability is so high, she's not going to lose anything other than the point in the war. And that means um, the most stability. That means nobody gets this four food. So if nothing else, she's prevented me from getting it. But anyway, so back to me, back to my turn. And now she is surprised because I'm going to fire uh, somebody from my ziggurat and hire them over there, which cost me another ore. Um, and my military goes up one, two, three more. And my stability goes down. So I've just given up stability. All right. Boom. And Jen was surprised by that. She did not need to put this guy in the ziggurat to get the stability. But if, you know, if I come down two, now she knows she wins it. She doesn't tie. She wins it. So back to me. Back to, I'm sorry. Back to Jen. Back to Jen's turn. She's got all her guys in place now. She's still got plenty of money. Does she want to buy anybody? Well, she doesn't want to buy these because they'll just kick the guys out. Really, about the only guy to buy is this Marco Polo. Give up two food or, or two ore. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, what the heck? She's going to buy him. Why not? She'll pay three bucks and buy him. And now whenever she wants, she can give up two food, or more importantly, two ore. And now that she generates more ore, she might do that to get more money if she ever needs it. All right, so that was her turn. Back to me. Back to my turn. Time to, it cost me two bucks, to colonize Engeland. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Before I do, if I pay three bucks, I can get Eleanor. Oh, but then I won't have the two bucks to get England. So I pay two bucks, yeah, to colonize England. It's going to replace one of my old colonies. I'm making three money. What do I want to give up? Do I want to give up the military? No, because now colonies are costing me more and more. Do I want to give up the ore? No, I'll give up the culture. So I'm going to start losing the culture war. All right. All right. But I made a point, and I'm going to start making a lot more money because I've been so tired of money. And in the meantime, I get three bucks right now, which means, uh, okay, back to Jen, her turn. Okay, 
I think she's done. I think she's going to pass. She could buy more stuff, but she's not particularly interested in the stuff she could buy. She could convert to get more money, but she can do that anytime. Um, right. So she's passing. She's done. Back to me. Back to my turn. Well, I'm going to start working on my oracle. One, two. To hire that architect. Jen's passed. I'm going to hire another architect, which cost me another ore. And then boom, one, two, right back up. Surprise, honey. She forgot. I'll be honest. I forgot that there was this oracle. So I've gone ahead and made the oracle. So now we've tied. If Jen had remembered that, she could have easily moved, say, somebody from the brewery to get more. But then she, she needs the food, too. So, all right. So anyway, we are now tied on stability. All right. And Jen is still passed, so it's still my turn. What else am I going to do? Now, I could, I could fire a military guy again, and that would save me a buck. Yeah, what the heck? I've got one more ore, so I'm going to fire a military guy. My military goes back down by one, two, three. And then, you know, that was a free action, but I'm going to pay an ore to put him back on the temple. Oh, no, look at this. I can go over here, and my, oh, very nice. Yes, I'm going to do that. And so my stability increases. I'm the king of stability again, and I'm going to generate another ore. And I'm going to generate a lot of food. Nice. Okay. And then I'm passing. So we're done with that round. Production time. Let's go. Okay. Oh, and this guy, of course, comes down here. Forgot that. All right. So, all right. Production. First of all, we generate money. No money. I lose two bucks there, but I generate three here. So I net one dollar. Okay. All right. Lose two. One there. So I net one dollar. Now, I could have fired these guys before my round was over, but then I just have to hire them back, and I can't keep doing that because it's gobbling up all my ore to keep firing and hiring my military. So that was my money. Next up, my food is... I don't lose any food. I have nothing. I break even on food. I don't gain or lose any. Or one, two, three, four, five, six ore. So I'm still the king of ore production. Very nice. And... Um, culture. No culture. Yeah, I get no culture. So, that's it. Jen, meanwhile, her money. She makes one, two, three, four, five. Uh, not quite up to pulling tens yet. Three, four, five. Well, actually, Jen could take a ten for her money. She's got tons of money. All right, so that's five bucks. Was there anything else? Uh, yeah, all right. And then her food. She generates... One, two, three, four, but she loses one, two, three, four. So basically she breaks even on food, right? Is that right? Wait a minute, how much money did she get? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah. And so she breaks even on food, two and two. Uh, or she generates one, two, three, four, five. For the first time in quite a while, Jen might not have to get income of ore. That's nice. All right, so she gets ore. And then culture. She gets one, two, Three culture. One, two, three. So she is continuing to scream ahead on culture, continuing to lock in these three bonus points over the course of the game. All right, so that was it for her culture. All right, okay. War. No, player order. I'm ahead on military once again, so I stay in front. Um, war. Hooray! Jen loses a point, which basically means I paid one buck to make her lose a point. And now she would lose six ore, but her stability happens to be right at six, so she doesn't lose any ore. No problems. Um, right. That's it for war. So the war goes away. And then the event. Right. Who has the most ability? That would be me. I get four food. Very nice. Four food. And um, now, this is a, a paper money, everybody. China has invented paper money. We all have the option. We can sacrifice three food to get five bucks. I don't have three, or Jen doesn't have three food. And she can't get it. So she, can, she cannot partake in the paper money. I, however, since I just made a lot of food, I will sacrifice three of the four food I just made to make five bucks. So the events definitely went my way. Okay, there we go. That was it. We're not scoring, so we move on. Now we're to the second half of the medieval era. Mint. Oh, all this stuff that didn't happen. Uh, but I've got a lot more money now. A lot more stuff's going to happen. All right, some more medieval stuff. Hey, another wonder. Piazza St. Marco, the Great Wall. al -Hazen. Oh, two leaders, three leaders, two leaders. Another colony. Another wonder. 
Siege of Constantinople, The War of the Roses, Still no military. Jen, I think she gives up. She is never going to try for military in this game. But that's okay. As you can see, she is doing just fine without military. By keeping her stability up, the lack of military does not hurt her at all. All right, so that came, those things came out. Now we have to pick our growth. I think, I think it's time for me to, I, I, I think I got to start getting more people. I just don't have enough people to make up for, um, yeah, because Jen's got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got five. I'm definitely going to hire somebody. But here's the thing, do I want to sacrifice food or do I want to sacrifice stability? So I'm ahead on stability, and for all I know, this event might really heavily reward stability. I won't know until it's revealed. <sighs> but I don't generate any food, but I don't lose any food either. So I'm doing okay on food. So with that, yeah, I'm going to sacrifice, I'm going to, I'm going to owe three food over here for this guy. Um, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so that was mine. What's Jen going to do? She has no food, and she's barely staying ahead on food. Um, these guys generate the food for her pyramids, but she's never getting ahead on food. She's got plenty of, yeah, she's going to take, well, no, she's going to take food or she's going to take, well, oh, but she, oh, no, I forgot she, Jen owed three food last turn for that guy she hired. Oopsie. Okay, rewind, way back machine. Um, hey, here we are back at the end of, we're still in our production phase. Um, and Jen, you know, she, de she generated four food. She lost four food, but then she needed three more food. Oh, noes. And she only had one left over. So that means Jen paid her food. And now because she, didn't, she couldn't pay everything in food, she loses a victory point, And she pays the rest of it in culture. So she lost two. Okay, here we are now again. Right, Jen is going to take food because she has to feed. I totally forgot about that. She has to feed the, this expansion of people she got. Oopsie. Sorry about that, folks. But anyway, so you got to see what happens when you don't have enough uh, resources. She didn't have enough food, so it came out of her culture. If you don't have enough culture, you can take it out of something else. All right, so Jen took food. I took another worker. And now we find out what the event is. A raid on uh, Lindisfarne in England. Whoever has the least military, that would be me, loses $4 this turn. So Jen's going to lose, I'm sorry, Jen, that would be Jen. Jen's going to lose 4 bucks. There's nothing she can do about it. Um, so the benefits of military. Iconoclasm, or icon, iconoclasm, bleh. Icons, alrighty, in the Byzantine Empire. Whoever has the least stability, which currently is Jen, so I could win both of these again, loses food and money. Jen can't afford to lose much more food. She, we might really be fighting for stability this time since... Yeah, I might just want to hold on to stability more than anything else with my new guy I got. But look at the new stuff that came out. I could do some battles and just get some more resources to make up for what I don't have. Although I got a lot of resources. I could get another colony, which would make me some more money and increase my military. Uh, what's my military at? Oh, it's, so I need to hire one more person to get this. Here's a war. I'd have to pay three bucks to get this war going, which again would bleed Jen of one point. There's two wonders that Jen might want to construct because, again, that's what she's really good at. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Two more architects. Oh, see. So these are the architects were, that didn't get used last turn. Two architects plus one came out. So there are three architects available. And now we go. So there are two wonders, but they're both per three wonders, but they're all pretty expensive. There's three architects to grab. So those wonders, see, this one. There's a permanent increase to stability, and the first to class never loses victory. So if Jen builds this, she'll never lose. I mean, it'll be pointless for me to start wars anymore because, so that might be really great for Jen to build this great wall. Chignitsa, whenever I buy a war, though, then I might want to keep buying wars because I'll get a victory point every time I buy a war. So these two kind of cancel each other out. And then, although, you know, if Jen builds both of them, she could buy wars and, wow. Okay, and then the crack de Chavier... Uh, six military. Because when you get into the third and the fourth age, you start needing a ton of military. You can see the military bar goes quite a ways around. So building this wonder would be huge for me to start getting the really super lucrative colonies later in the game. Wow. That's a lot of options. But you know what? I'm going to stop there because I'm at 40 minutes right now. And you guys definitely, definitely have an idea. The game just continues to escalate. When we get into the third age and we start seeing stuff like, you know, things that start taking three or even four ore to build, but they start generating multiple victory points off the guy, start generating a lot more goods, uh, wonders that start doing interesting stuff. Uh, bonus, whenever you do a golden age, well, we haven't seen many golden ages in this game, but, you know, they give you two of whatever it is. 
And this is worth two victory points, getting into the fourth age. Submarines, hooray! You can put up to four, you can build four submarines. That's seven points if you build four submarines, but they're expensive to build, and your, but your military increases hugely. And you need a lot of military. Let's see if we can find a colony. Uh, colony, colony, what are call our colonies? Oh, and then there's new leaders, of course. Uh, Frederick the Great increases your military. Military, oh yeah, there's, um, there's just so much stuff. Things get so much more exciting as we continue to race to the end of the game to see who is the greatest nation in the world. Okay, folks, that's it. I am beat, I am spent. The game just continues to escalate. You get the idea. I probably made a few mistakes here and there, like forget, I'm glad I remembered to pay the penalty for that food. But you guys can go to Final Thoughts now because I'm ready to talk about this game and how much I love, 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 love it in five, four, three, two, one.